Just the Italian fans love it. They love the way he plays. Mechanically, he's very strong. I did a lot of great things, but now he makes his day and something else. Suzuki. Will he get the quadra kill? Looks like Mini Trupac wants to bring it home. Nope. Ryan's gonna take it in the end. To visit Chachi in the back line. They're caught in the pinch. This is a good spot for Azir if he can find the fight, but instantly combos into the back line. Juzuke is there. Vander goes golden, but at the cost of his 80 carries life. Axel's on the top side as well, trying to help pass out a scale up the Centrix. That was so close. He might be dead hit. Juzuki's looking for the power side. He gets it. Paddle Star towards the minions, he gets away, and now we'll have to see the 1v1. Jazuke with no mana. Paddle Star, the smite's there as well, but the bubble doesn't connect. And Jazuke is doing wonders here. He's got no mana, but they have a TP. He's on the chase, and Jazuke does this. This is the best play I've ever seen. Fantastic plays coming in from our rookie, The Split. Welcome back to the continuing coverage of the EU LCS semifinals, where Vitality have just brought the series to one and two. Now, we wanted to take a moment to dial in on The Split's breakout player from Team Vitality, the rookie of The Split, the Italian stallion, Jazuke himself. Now, this is a guy who, when Vitality needed someone to play through mid-around, he stepped up. He was the center of the team. He was the crux. And in the award for, or in the race, rather, for rookie of The Split, he was the clear standout contestant. 111 votes for Jazuke. Suzuki, Sheriff and Norskaren, each with fantastic performances of their own on their respective teams, but not even able to come close. 52 and 42 points, respectively. Of course, it didn't just stop in the regular season, however. He was the primary factor for them finishing fourth overall, but their quarterfinal kept it rolling. The Talia, his new standout pick, no longer the rise that he made his name on, having an incredible impact across this series. Kept it going throughout just about the entire thing to bring it home for the team, even in a rough full five games. Now, coming into today, however, it was a slower start to the day. It was a little bit rougher. We saw a little bit of weakness in vitality as Jazuke fell to some ganks. He started to fall behind a, a little bit in terms of individual performances, but he brought it back in game three, and that's what matters. That's exactly what vitality need. You can see how effective he can be when he gets support from the team, when he finds the options. This, of course, the game one moment where he may have faltered, but as the games kept going, as he kept finding these opportunities, he was able to shut down the key members of Fnatic. Amazing called him the best Talia he'd ever seen, and we need to see if this guy can keep the performance up as we move further in the series because they have the momentum now on the side of Vitality and if they want to take down Fnatic if they want to knock them down to that third place match they need to keep it going in the mid lane we're now going to see if Jazuke and his team can keep up the momentum as we send it to quick shot for game four Thank you very much, Dracos. We'll see whether or not the rookie of the split can continue to step up. His team fight impact has been extremely oh, yes. noticeable. And him, along with the entirety of Vitality, have to keep bringing the punches to Fnatic. And now we get into what I consider the most exciting part of a best of five. Okay. It's game four, it's two one for one team, and we get to see if people are panicking. Are they changing stuff just to do it because they feel like, oh, we lost you the last game. have to change something to win. Something needs to go, go, go different. But if we look at the last game, the first 20 minutes, outside of Vitality successfully killing 
Whippo up in the top lane. Yes. The rest of Fnatic were doing well. Yes. They were even in gold. They killed Gilius at 20 minutes over the one setting up Baron. So they could legit copy the exact same pick and ban face and still feel okay with it. So to Fisher, is it fair to say Fnatic were matching Vitality's early game, going blow for blow with them? They were matching the early game. The game was lost around the first Baron that Fnatic tried to go for, where Vitality and especially Jizuke managed to kite them and outplay them. I want to see if there are changes happening. You know, maybe you don't go trundle this time around and that's the one you swap out but for Fnatic and also knowing Youngbuck when he was on G2 Esports never liked to make drastic changes after a loss in the best of five typically took that time to figure out okay is it in fact the pick and ban phase that's wrong yeah or is it just our in-game execution the one change for Fnatic this time around is Camille getting banned yes. instead of the Cyan let's see if it's Jin from Vitality I still think you should ban Swain here but it might just be the Jin again well the Swain has suffered its first loss in 15 games here on the EU LCS stage by Vitality's hand, it is the Jin. You have to assume if Swain is not locked here, it will be secured by Vitality. And now we see the pivots. I want to see Vitality get Cyan. I called it the best pick for Kabusha top as a tank because it allows him to roam to mid and further snowball Jizuke, but they could also swap it to the mid lane if they need. It is available in this draft. It's the change from Fnatic because it was banned last yes. time around. Vitality have lost that Camille that they used to play around Kabushad with. Tom Kench, of course, has been the go-to pick yep. for Jackshaw whenever it is available. And if they don't want top lane here, we might just get Gilly's jungle pick. Seeing as there's so many 80 carry bans, it feels like none of the remaining 80 carries needs to be early picked. Oof. Tension is building. Gilly's played the Olaf in the previous Olaf game, is locked in. It is the jungler that you mentioned could have come in. Gilly's had a good performance on that pick, found options. So, Fnatic's reply. Braum Ezreal, the last two games when they saw this. Braum again makes perfect sense against the Tom Kench. That's a fine pick for Fnatic if they want to grab it. The Ezreal pick, some people after the last loss calls for a different champion, but it wasn't due to the picks that Fnatic lost. Yep. It was the execution around that Baron that cost them the game. And it's going to be the Braum once again. Now we might actually see Ezreal banned against Reckless if they want to continue the trend of banning him out. So Zuke got that Talia we saw in the hype video that was created to commemorate his rookie of the split award, just how well he used it. We saw replays from last week's quarterfinal. It's important to note that Jazuke's Weaver's walls have not unlocked the side lanes quite as effectively as Vitality would like but no doubt he's dancing on the edge of those team fights flawlessly. We'll need to do it again. Yeah, and as we mentioned going into this pick and ban phase, Young Buck and also Dylan Falco now, not changing too many things. Yes. It's still the Trundle jungle. It's still the Swain and Braum on their side. Oh, Silver Band is still 80 carry focused, yeah. yeah I mean, you, at this point, you might as well commit fully to it. We asked for five 80 carry bands from Vitality. We're probably going to get it here. Do they want to get rid of the Ezreal on their side? I Minitrubic mean, can play Varus if it is left open. And then we just saw him perform on a more scaling carry yep. from before. We've seen it banned in both previous games uh, by Fnatic. It continues that trend. Three games in a row now banned. Yet another 80 carry. Okay, so what is left yet? B uh, Bwipo and Caps could rotate that Swain. Scion is still up and available if they yep. want to go that route. What other champions are up? Many troop packs. 580 carries. Vitality gonna ban Jinx. This is ridiculous. So Ezreal's still left open in this draft here. Korkmore also open. Twitch, I'm just gonna mention all the AD carries now. Twitch and Callista still available. Callista could actually be played, but okay. she's mainly used if you see Zyra Khan on the other side, and obviously that's not gonna be the case here. So Shen Ban, what does that mean to you, and, and what is that telling me? Oh, I think they were respecting Vitality, maybe drafting to actually win the bot lane very hard. And then the Shen pick is what we have seen from Kapushad a few times to really facilitate that bottom side, now with more AD carry bans, but you can hear the crowd in Berlin. See, that would be great. This is going back many, many years. He might just pick Ezreal again, guys. Oh. I know, it's I know. It's important to note that the fans here in Berlin, heavily Fnatic focused. It sounded like a library in game three when Vitality shut them all up. And Reckless is locking in the Ezreal with Whippo's Gangplank once again. No okay. traditional tanks. Kabshar can still grab something where Vitality can snowball top against the GP. He's not the greatest at answering. Especially after like stopwatch was moved all the way to 10 minutes instead of 6. Like it's a lot easier to try and shut down GP in the early game than it was on previous patches when we saw GP top in Europe every game. So the NAR, while it's not this 
pure snowballing top lane pick, yes. it's still a champion you can play towards if you are Vitality. A lot easier than going to the bottom side, where it's more of a defensive setup on both teams. So we might get the exact same kind of picture, but Vitality want to snowball top, Fnatic want to try and stop the snowball from happening, while bot lane becomes the farm lane. It's officio, this feels like potentially skirmishes uh, in different areas once Gilius and Broxa decide to set up those ganks, set up those plays. And we're so close to having the same comps as well. It's just GP top and NAR top. That, that's the change. Philosophically. So, so interesting. Cabo and Buipo, let's see what show they put on. If you have just joined us, welcome to the semi-finals. Fnatic are one win away from making their first final in two and a half years. Vitality are two wins away from the biggest upset, maybe in EU LCS history. And of course, it was a good, convincing, confidence-building win for Team Vitality in Game 3. But they need to continue the momentum, they need to continue that pressure going into this match. And now they're testing that fragile Fnatic mindset that collapsed last year in playoffs when they got 3 0 by Misfits. Yes, they did. Reckless told us on the podcast it will not happen again. Well, he has to prove it. And Deficio, anybody that has been watching and listening, will be starting up Reckless's POV stream for a special Ezreal. fourth edition episode of How to Ezreal into Lane. It is twitch.tv slash Riot Games 2. You guys can check that one out. And the pressure is there. The Fnatic faithful sending their goodwill and energy to the pre-season favorites. Okay, Trevor. Let's see. Last few games, Fnatic have been able to stop the early snowball from Vitality every single time. They won the early game, game one. They went even game two and game three. Yep. We've actually never gotten to the point in this series where Vitality after a successful early game, have to start playing around Baron. It's always been them responding to Fnatic, trying to set it up, and then it's gone back and forth. Last game, it went in favor of Vitality. Let's see this game here, if they can utilize Jizuke's Talia and Gilles Olaf to get someone like Kabo Shot yeah. even further ahead. And can they prevent giving some of these little bit uh, over-aggressive kills over to Fnatic, where it's actually Vitality overextending. I mean, talking about Vitality overextending, the first tower dive they tried to set up on Buipo in the previous game failed heavily. Not executed well between Jazuke, Gilius, and Kabashar. We'll explore that a little bit later as Hillian Reckless coming in to just interrupt and really frustrate Gilius, try to get into his head. Not really going to make a big difference, though. It's not costing uh, huge amounts to the Vitality squad, but no CS picker, by the way. One of the big things they're doing also is they're forcing Gilius to smite early uh, on against the blue buff here. Instead of just getting the leash and you, you can save the smite for next camp, because they're staying around, there's a chance they steal it. Right. Gilius needs to use smite there. So it does, again, slow him down a little bit. And in this situation here, Reckless and Hillsang also gets to go bot lane fairly early. Yeah, he manages to get a couple of those Mystic shots down, so some early pots in this Kleptomancy Ezreal build. We both played Gangplank this series already, and he was hyper-aggressive in lane. He was actually flashing forward into Cabo's Camille. So I'm expecting to see what he can do. Very good tag on that Q from Heli. This is level one engage. Ignite's used already, and that's a defensive flash times two. Gigantic win for Fnatic. One of those things in the bottom lane where you're not fully aware of when the enemy team, you know, can jump towards you. And it happens actually quite often on stage, which is still surprising because that level two tends to be pretty obvious. You know, when you get it, when you can all in, and because Jack I Troll, even know it. Because Jack Troll had to start Q due to those level one yep. fights we had, there was no devour, and then he couldn't actually save me the and they both had to flash away. That's a big early start for Fnatic's bottom lane. Is okay? It's just warding, not ganking yet. Especially for the captain, the face of Fnatic. Help potentially to some the face of the EU LCS. Reckless getting the advantage with the help of Helisang. Now Caps will get a little bit of pressure relief from Broxa. Jazuke just uses that cleanse because of all the CC that can come down. He ran earlier in the matchup, no cleanse. It ended up hurting him quite heavily. That was into a Zoe, of course. This time around, it is into the Swain. Dash forward from Hilly. <laughs> it's just a little minion blocked. That little wiggle was a touch awkward and what could have come there. Well, meanwhile, mid here, as we said, Broxa. Putting some uh, focus towards it. Was very successful during this in game one. He's back. Oh, look at that. The Trundle Pillar into the Swain passive. 
Juzuki ejects uh, chunks down from that vision of the Empire. Caps is going to be forced to wait. Gilius in the right area at the right time to help his mid laner out. Yeah, but two ganks now from Broxa towards Juzuki, trying to just slow him down. No flash from member bot lane. Bum, 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 bum. Who's going fishing? Devour from Jaxor. Spits out Hillisek. He's down to 50 HP. Flashes away. The Ignite is ticking Gilius. down. Gilius will be able to pick up the kill with that flash. Reckless swing. Vitality first blood. It was a bait all along. No flashes. Bot lane. Fnatic thought they could just set up an easy play. Broxa moving down. But after that trade, is one with the Tam Kench Devour. Suddenly, it's Gilius showing up. He gets the first one. He's starting that Ocean Drake. Broxa is still around, can go check what's happening. TP is well coming. Oh man, Fnatic will not go quietly after losing first blood. The Vision's not gonna tag Jack Troll, but he buys some time for the Devour as it's Reckless that gets the kill credit. Dragon was interrupted and Caps used his teleport for that. So at least they've interrupted that map objective. But that TP would just have been used back to lane anyway for Caps. So it's just a little bit of a detour where he actually grabs an assist for himself down in the bottom lane. So still worth it despite using a TP for the one kill, but this is a trade before. Whoa, 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 down in the top lane, bottom of your corner. We both forced a flash, he survives. Sorry, Deficio, because that's the end of the replay. I mean, there's not a lot else to say. Gilio showed up and flashed and killed him. <laughs> Thank you, Deficio, for that top tier analysis. This is the teleport that was the detour you talked about. Yep, I mean, he's gonna walk towards mid anyway, so he doesn't even have to go towards enemy turret. He's on his way back to the lane where he's actually supposed to be. Everything in the end evens out in terms of the kill spot. Small early win for Vitality, and especially towards the bottom lane where they lost the early flashes. That was going to be a tough situation to be in, but then they get that kill. So important. It also, again, goes to the leader for Vitality. Caps is trading into Jazuka yet, does not have access to his Demonic Ascension. So cannot continue the fight. Down 10 CS. And just very briefly to touch on what we saw in the corner of our screen there, Bwipo got jumped on by Cabo Shard. Forced to flash early, uh, picked up his coal on the first back and has teleported back to lane. So we both feeling the pain of that NOR matchup. Yeah, and that's again the thing with the GP is it is fairly easy for Vitality to try and punish it. Also, I have to mention that GP now after all these Klepto nerfs, is going grasp uh, for the lane phase a lot more on his side and less gold generation. So he doesn't as quickly reach two and three items where he really becomes a big carry. Obviously, already in one item, he can start trading fairly effectively, but he's still so squishy. Kabushan is going in again. He is indeed. Gets the Mega Nara into the wall. A real follow-up immediately after that. I think he interrupted that Powder Cake too. So Bwipo, again, just being jumped on, just being pressured over and over and over. And if you have just joined us, of course, Sora has injured his hand. So Bwipo will be the starting top laner for the remainder of the EU LCS playoffs. Caps and Brox are looking Gilead's for his way. Here comes Gilead. Ragnarok thrown down. Caps and Demonic Ascension surviving. Flashes away to safety. Bursts down. Gilead for the kill. And the Pigeon save his life. Oh, that's a kill for the Swain now. Caps in that mid lane. He looked very, very close. And Gilead did everything he could to try and turn the gank around. But the fact that Caps gets that kill is huge for Fnatic. Once again, trying to stay even in this early game. Do not want to fall behind against this Talia that can just roam everywhere. The ganking Jizuka for like the fourth time in this game. It's all back to game one. Just trying to shut down the mid lane of Vitality. And Kilius comes in, deals a ton of damage, gets one hit on Broxa instead of getting that hit on Caps to actually finish him. Unreal. And then he dies. Caps was so close to going down, but that one hit onto Broxa suddenly meant that was not another kill for Vitality. And I've seen this minigame all weekend long. Can I buy a vowel? Hashtag Ben Swain, will it become a reality again? This time you said it correctly, and we'll I won't get faded. Out I won't get faded. And of course, when we started the day, one of the narratives we had, one of the stories we had coming into this game, one of the ways we felt Vitality could have won this game and the series was to play around Jazuki to try and camp caps. And we've seen Gilius and Brox are spending a fair amount of time over the last few minutes in that lane. Funny enough, Jazuki's flash is still there. It's not actually been forced to you know, play in this lane a lot without a flash and have to constantly be afraid of a pillow being placed behind him because he's been able to kind of dance away from the trunk line. That's kind of the thing. It's a little bit difficult for Broxa to get in range fast yeah. enough to really be a huge threat so far. Gilius, level seven. Jazuki's ulti is ready. We're looking towards top side. We and uh, there. Uh, he's on his way. They're waiting. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, the last time this dive was attempted, Jazuke threw down the Weaver's Wall and it unfortunately blocked Cabo Shard and Gilius. So we won't see it happening this time. Timing was not quite there. As we throw our glance to the mid lane now, good seismic shot. Hey, look who's here, it's Broxa! Manages to get the damage down. And look who's here too, Gilius. 
to Fisher really quickly. I want to look at Jazuke's stats once this action dissipates because Hillisung's there as well. And that was his performance until he had the previous game. 3, 1, and 4. Great damage per minute and nearly 40% of his team's damage percentage. And the crazy thing, at 20 minutes, he was 0, 1, 1 in this game. Had not been able to really snowball on this Talia pick, but the team fights suddenly where he showed his value, which also explains the very high you know, damage and damage percent on his side. Now, Jizuke, this game, Fnatic are trying to keep him down. They're trying to make sure he never leaves this lane. Cap's TP will soon be ready. If we follow tradition, Cap will use the TP back to lane and not actually save it to match a potential roam. Maybe this game will be different. We'll see. Well, it's 10 minutes in, and we've got another even early game. Junglers are about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the Riverbush, but Gilius will see the advantage. Gets a lot of very early damage onto Broxa. As Gilius starts to get chunked down and his defense is stolen from Subjugate, Broxa's gonna run away, and Caps is now on a trouble. Threaded Volley's gonna fall Whoa. short. Every nope. single shot, just shy. But this will allow Gilius and Jazuke a couple of autos onto the tower. And again, it is just an even early game that is not defining the victor just yet. But Mortality are currently winning the mid lane push, and there's that second TB back to lane once again from Caps to try and make sure he doesn't fall further behind. Yes, there was one kill in an early skirmish, but it's Suzuki pushing the lane. He's looking towards topside once again, realizing, oh. okay, he's not getting anything, and now they're fighting over control wards. You could just see this entire game is kind of defined by these mid laners. Jazuke is going to sidestep away from Caps' skill shots, and now Gilius running for his life. Cannon Barrage will buy some time, helping out the Fnatic roster as we oh, thrust it. It's Jazuke into Caps' waiting hands. Now Cabochard's a little bit tired. He doesn't have Mega Nar to gnar out, and Weepo's going to teleport him to the river, chasing down Cabo. That gnar bar will slowly start to build up, but he may not survive long enough. Pillar of Ice comes down, flash over the wall, continues to run for his life. Powder Kick will buy some time as Cabochard was chunking out Brox incredibly low. Eventually, Cabo will get shut down, but will it be quickly enough? Bounces over the wall, finally gets taken down. Puipo and Fnatic take the lead. But we've already learned that in the actual 2v2 fight, the Swain and the Trundle will win, especially when Swain ulti is available. So you saw how it started, and Vitality had to run away. Dizuke's ulti there, too risky, too aggressive, thinking he could actually get out alive. Could have used it up towards Kaposhad instead and take that route away from the potential fight. Because we look at this, the push goes in favor of the Talia, but the actual all-in with the Trundle and Swain ultis being popped here, like, they have to run instantly. Dizuke's out. Gilius needs to flash away, the GP ulti comes down, and now, Dizuke, I'm not sure if he thought he could go in and get a bit of damage, and then Kabusha could finish him, or he used it to try and get out, but that backfired hard, and now he gets ganked without flash. Yeah, he really does. Caps continues to look forward, looks for that death hand, and manages to get the killing spree. 3-0-2, hashtag ban Swain. It's a thousand gold lead for Fnatic, a hundred percent kill participation for Broxa and Caps. It's just go mid all the time, just like game one, and it's working for them because some of the fights have broken out, it's been in their favor, and now there's no flash. Finally, Jisuke had to use it in the last one. Yeah. Then the pillar is perfect to just place behind him. That's a free kill, and no vision around the lane for Vitality to try and save the mid laner. And at the moment, it's Fnatic winning another early game. And that means they are getting closer and closer to the first final in two and a half years. Closer to eliminating Vitality from the championship bout. And at this moment, no towers have even fallen. This is still just a laning phase battle. This is just laning phase kills and skirmishes. It is but a mid lane have a lot of chance. <laughs> yes, exactly. You can watch Reckless Farm in the bot lane with the POV stream, or you can watch this one, and it's basically just mid lane. Yeah. It is a jungler and a mid laner from both teams are fighting each other over and over, and so far, Hey, Latics duo has been winning. Mid laners need some more support, ladies and gentlemen. Where's the Abyssal Voyage coming in? Jack Troll gonna deliver himself uh, mini two packs as well. Glacial Fisher comes down from Hillisang as Caps buys some time with a stopwatch. He runs for his oh, life. Oh, Damn, take it out! Mini two packs spits him down with the living artillery and vitality. Get one kill back. Can't win the 2v2, just send in some more members. Big kill here from Mini True Packs. Rageblade gonna be ready next time he goes back. Reckless will get a bit of damage on Jack Troll, but who really cares? There's a couple of Vitality fans yelling and screaming ah! over in the corner. Reckless, how did you do that? Mini True Packs scratching his head. The last remaining rookie ADC. After all the expectations and all the names, it's Mini True Packs 
at standing in the semi-finals and unfortunately gets dunked by the king of EU ADCs. There was a warp being placed just over the wall, spotting mini Trupax walking back down to his lane and what was actually a good play from Vitality completely backfires by the lane. Top lane. <laughs> Gabo Shard gets the Mega Nar just as Gilius arrives. Thinking about the tower dive, continues to chase. One more prop from the Hyper will just about Here's do it. Trundle. And it was the undertow, I think, from Gilius that got the final hit. Now Broxa doesn't want to go in for a 1v2. Gonna get smited down, or challenged down rather, on that reckless swing, and he's forced away. Perhaps not able to uh, match it. TP still on cooldown. Jizuke back in mid against him, but Vitality responding here, getting a few kills for themselves. This is the initial fight around mid where they send in everyone from the bottom lane as well, and it's 4v1 at first until we get Hillisang joining to try and help the caps. Needs to use the stopwatch early, still goes down due to that last ulti from Mini Trubax. Perfect. Lands onto him and he dies. But then, of course, bot lane. There's this ward here near the blue buff from Reckless that will spot Mini Trubax walk by just outside the screen. There you see it. And Mini Trubax, he's low. Oh, he doesn't expect unlucky. it. Unlucky. And he dies. I think unlucky. his heal was on like a two second cooldown. Well, there we go. What can you do about that? Mini Trupax gets chunked down. That's the sixth kill that was secured by Fnatic. They got the first tower. They've got Rift Herald. They've got a gold lead of 1,500 just after 15 minutes. And now they're setting up Siege on this top tower. This looks like a game just like the last one we had where Vitality are not winning due to the early game. They need to now outplay Fnatic in the late game around the Barons itself like we saw last time here where they actually managed to do it. It can happen again. On the side of Fnatic, there's still a lot of squishy members. It's not the same choke at top lane. This GP can die quickly and fight if yeah. he gets caught out. Yeah. So Vitality, despite not winning early, still have ways back. Hey, away. welcome back to the mid lane stream as Caps gets caught by a beautiful seismic shove. He gets dunked down, kill secured by Mini Trupax, and the tower in the bottom, and the tower in the mid lane. Nice one. Vitality are not done yet. They're answering here, and it, once again, it's Jackthrow going mid with Mini Trupax to secure the kills. Two kills now for the AD carry. Looking towards bottom side, Gilius needs to run away now. All right, gonna find a little bit of a trade with Brox as he gets the chomp down. Have to remember there's no ult for Jack Troll, was just used mid so he can't join on the bottom side, but that's two turrets for each team. And once again, a lot of early game action. And this game's not over, the tension continues to develop and build. Fnatic have got that tiny bit of breathing room that they have one game advantage. But from a mindset, from a mentality standpoint, they cannot afford to lose this. They cannot afford to go to a Silver Scrapes Game 5 scenario. Reckless is going to hop over the wall with that Arcane ship. And then we'll get Shelly at least a little boop onto the Vitality Outer Tower, but there's no minions. And that was a little bit of a fizzled Rift Herald usage. Well, they got the charge on the turret at least on their side. Looking at cooldowns, Bolt for Jack Troll not available. Jizuke sitting with his, but funny enough, just like some of the other games, he's not been able to use the ulti to nope. really snowball uh, the side lanes that hard. It's actually been a lot of just fighting around Jizuke. Yeah, to be fair, he's, he hasn't had much chance to leave the lane. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously <laughs> Fnatic's game plan. It's like, yeah, yes. let's go mid five million times. It's It's been fairly simple in terms of that. <laughs> it, like the sheet they have backstage as the cast, uh, as uh, the coaches, it just says like, first pick Swain, camp mid. And yeah, then exactly. that's what they tell the players. I mean, you're talking about camp mid. We actually have uh, some jungle proximity stats of, of how much time the junglers have spent around the mid laners. This is the amount of time that the team's jungler has spent near, within range of the mid laners. And it's pretty heavy in game four, 37%, 33%. <laughs> really, really insane amount of time around the mid, but of course we've seen it. Five, six kills already, and we're not done yet. So even in gold at the moment, Item-wise, of course, Ezreal with two early kills plus Klepto will be ahead at this point in the game compared to what Mini Trupex can offer on his side. But if he can get to two or three items like the last game, he can deal a ton of damage in the fight. Yeah. There, there's no easy tank for him to hit every time. No. Nope. Trundle is going to go in, put down a pillar, and then walk out in most of them. But it also means for Fnatic, because they play GP, there's a little bit more it comes down to execution in fights. Because GP is not easy to play in these late game team fights, it's very hard to connect the barrels when there's so many members who can just hit it and kill it yeah. before it actually happens. And we gotta see if, uh, if they can do it in this game here. Yeah, and of course, Weepo, third game, uh, fourth game in the semi-final. He only had two regular season games behind him. 
now in this high intensity situation. Two games in a row, he's been a focus of a lot of attention from Vitality. Once again, Vitality loves to send two members to the same lane. They're doing it bot lane here. Jizuke is around Kapushat's lane, trying to see if they can maybe catch out anyone. But, but there's an opportunity behind mid. Weaver's wall, you can see the animation slowly coming up. Gets interrupted and Fnatic have an escape route. It ends up costing Hillasang his flash. Is there a counterplay now from Caps? He's coming from the north. Not gonna find an opportunity in just yet. Turret is low. All five members of Fnatic nearing this turret. They can put GP all behind it if they want to and force them away to secure the turret. Kava shot's got Megano and Teleport available to him. Seismic Chef catches onto Broxa. There's the cannon barrage. Tower's not even going to be focused as Fnatic are diving. They killed Billy Troopax. The uh, passive not going to do oh, anything now. anymore. Now Jazuki's in trouble. He gets caught and swallowed and devoured by Jack Troll. Sent running for his life and Fnatic, they continue the siege. They killed this turret before Kava shot could show off. That's big for Fnatic. Also getting that kill. I think Devour must have been on cooldown for Jack Troll. Kajra gets a bit of damage but he needs a lot of time before he kills this turret here. So big play, grouping five men mid, GPO behind the turret, and they get more kills. Four at the moment for the Swain. He wants right. more. Let's see if Cabo can make it out. Flash is available to him as well as that hop. He doesn't want more, he wants A lot play. of tools to escape into Fischio. Confident, proactive play from Fnatic. As we get to 20 minutes, as we get to a 2,000 gold lead, it all starts with the mid lane. Yeah, so Jaxwell had to use early Devour to save Gilius, and now it's not ready. Caps straight on to the enemy to carry lands to CC, pulls him back, and Mini Trubex cannot stay alive. And suddenly it's Fnatic getting a turret, getting a kill. And I think the flash was available in the fight for Mini Trubex, but probably didn't yeah. get to see the actual uh, ability fly out from the Swain. It's just such a dirty combination. Vrom, Trundle plus Swain. Get any of that tag CC down. Use the Swain passive to pull him even closer and destroy whatever unlucky champion is caught in your grasp. And Fnatic have done it flawlessly. They've got themselves a very healthy lead. Not done yet. Jack Troll actually used his flash there to get away as many troop packs were shoving in the top lane. And Fnatic are now setting themselves some vision, some control in the river. Baron was pivotal in the previous game. Vitality punished a Fnatic Baron call which is what allowed Vitality to get into the game, get back into the series. And they have to do the same in this one here. We talked about this in Champs like how Finnar is not the same kind of split push as a Camille who can just really easily take over the side lane. It's a lot slower for Kabusha, but of course he's going to be a much better in actual team fights if he gets there. He's still able to win it. He's still able to constantly apply pressure, and he will get down this turret here. So more gold for Vitality. Yeah. Still slightly behind after that play that happened mid. And Camps is moving towards the mid lane to see if he can catch the rest of Vitality. Well, TP as well. They are responding very, very well. Teleport from Weepo. Cannon Barrage has already been used. The Mini Troopax holding on to that flash for a few seconds longer. Powder Kicks come out. That will force the flash from Mini Troopax. A parlay to Gilius as Jack Troll will be the sacrificial catfish. We'll get taken down by the Death's Hand. And now Baron will potentially be a focus. So this is what happened last game. Fnatic gets one kill, and then they start the early Baron around 21 minutes. All of Vitality on the way. Kabushat's Mega Knight is gone, but Jizuke is still here. Full HP, full mana. Can he do it again? All right, Mega Knight not available. Reaver's Wall not available. Baron is down to 4,000 hit points. Gilius, what can you do? Jizuke's down! Fnatic take him out. They've turned their attention now onto Kabushat, trying to run him down as Caps' ultimate will time out. Okay, sacrificing one to prevent the Baron. It's not ideal, but at least it prevents Fnatic getting further ahead. This time here, Vitality didn't have a chance to actually win the fight. Yuzuki walked in, no flash, got CC'd, pulled back, and he died instantly. Gillis was ready on the other side to potentially flash in and actually steal the Baron, but in the end, Fnatic do not lose the fight no. and the Baron like they did last game. So what you were talking about in Picks and Bands, Deficio, similar team comps, similar styles. It's the decision making and the execution yes. that is now being upgraded. Yeah, last game was all about execution, and this time, Fnatic here will go back towards the lanes. Another big wave being picked up by Caps, and he's extremely fed on this Swain. This is the initial play. The call is just to sacrifice Jack Troll. No flash, no way he's getting out, and Mini Trubex will have to flash away after he sees what happens. And then Fnatic, the instant is saying, you know what, let's go Baron again. Worst case, we just force a fight yeah. versus four team fight, and that's exactly what they do. Because when Jisuke shows up, and there's no flash on his side, it's very easy with Pillar, other CCs to actually land it onto the Tilly. Let's just watch Jisuke moves in. What happens? He gets pillared and he gets eaten by Caps and pulled back. I mean, that combination, Pillar into Swain passive. Which yeah, no flash, so you don't get away. So effectively. Flash is still on cooldown for Jisuke. Despite the fact that Vitality have two dragons, they are still 3,000 gold down. They need to be very, very careful 
in these team fights. Now all that's going on. Fnatic are looking, they're setting their sights in the final, waiting to see if they will have a battle with G2 Esports. I think that was smited down. No, many troop packs actually got it. And one thing for Vitality is they don't really have a way of denying a lot of healing from this Swain. So when Caps gets in there, he's already sitting with the Hourglass, he can take a bunch of damage, pop the Hourglass, come back out and still look super strong, and actually then fire off the ulti and deal even more burst damage. The fact that it's the Swain getting so fat, this makes it even harder for Vitality yeah. when it comes to the actual team fights. But as long as they can stop Fnatic from getting Baron, there's a chance they can punch him here. Oh. Jack Scholl, no flash. Another very forward move from Hilly saying Jack Scholl's going to be the target. Great help by a couple extra seconds, but simply not enough. Reckless is on a killing spree at 3-0-1. Arcane shifting forward. Jazuke finally found some time, but Mini Troopax goes down. The Akathian surprise will not be enough to stop anything further. And with two members of Vitality down, Fnatic turned towards Baron. Well, right now, we saw the wall from Talia actually blocked them from getting into the Baron, so it's delaying them quite a bit. Jack is alive in 10 seconds with all, but Mini Troopax dead for another 20. Gilius Flash is ready, but he's getting forced away. Weepo's got a lot of damage with the Sterics Gauge and that Trinity Force. Throwing down the barrels, trying to keep Gilius out of the pit, down to 3,500 hit points. Cabo's coming in from the sidelines. He's got never coming available soon. to him. Jazuke's being run away from Caps. Baron's going very, very low. Cabo's in the pit. The Baron is going to be secured shortly. Flash yes! out! It's not going to be secured! Broxa wins the smite fight! Vitality are getting wrecked! And Fnatic take a gigantic lead! This play decides the entire game. Fnatic gets the early kills around mid, they then secure the Baron for themselves. It's a perfect play. They don't care about the Gnar. He's too slow in the side lane. So they just keep grouping and forcing plays against no flashes on the side of Vitality. After they get the kills, they go Baron. It looks risky for a moment because we have three members from Vitality coming in. Love the wall, by the way, to delay. It. But now with three guys coming, one from top side, one coming in from the left with Suzuki, and one coming from the bottom. Capshot's Mega Gnar is so huge, and Gilius tries to get in to at least get the Baron. Yes, they might lose the fight, but if he can get the buff for his team and deny it from Fnatic, it could be huge. And he's in there. Oh, he's down to 573 HP. But this time, Broxa wins the fight for the Baron, and Fnatic will clean it up. They're now really far ahead in gold. Ton of extra items coming in on their side, and that one play might have just put Fnatic in the final. 7,000 gold up. A chance to reclaim the Fnatic legacy that has ended ever since the G2 dynasty has taken over. Now, Caps will get run down here, but simply not enough damage to follow up, so Caps escapes with his life. They're trying again. Jusuke is here now. Look at the mini-map, though. Three members of Fnatic in the mid lane. They, they, they need push this kill. Down. But no, they can't, actually, because there's Hourglass as well on the Swain. It's too risky for them. That's mid lane turret dropping. Chasing a loss in Fnatic. They are so close to that final, Deficio. Two and a half years. Five splits later. And finally on the verge of doing it. For Vitality, they need a miracle. They need a, a, a magnificent fight. A Meganar for the ages to turn this around. And it's going to be exponentially more difficult. Oh, well, Fnatic looking to secure that top lane out of turret. Getting a 10,000 goal lead in just a few seconds if they actually take it down. Vitality hoping they can get a fight to get back in this game here. But right now, the Meganar is gone. It means Fnatic are feeling super safe. Yeah. We're not even 30 minutes into the game, Deficio. There's been 18 kills, there's been nine towers, so much action. Pretty, pretty standard in Vitality games. We look at many troop backs. The combination of Trundle plus Swain chunks him down, despite having Flash available, does not want a follow-up fight. Weepo is bringing the minion wave from the mid lane while Fnatic break open the base in the top lane. Time is running out for Vitality as Fnatic are crashing into the base. A second inhibitor falls. And the coffin, the lid, the nails are being hammered with each passing objective. No way for Fnatic here to actually get engaged on. Due to no Meganar being available, you can't just run at them as an Olaf. It's too easy for Fnatic to play against. So now, they get double in here. They secured that Baron they lost last game, which effectively lost them the entire game, which got us to this game four. And as we talked about in Champ Select, with the coaches on this team, and with the fact they have a lot of experience, they're saying, we don't need to change a whole yes. lot. You know, I saw people complain about the Ezreal, and then suddenly it was like, ah, the Trundle was useless in the last game, but it was not the champions, it was the execution. In this game here, Fnatic, they did it better.
And that would have been the expectation. The Fnatic roster came into the split with the fewest number of changes of any of the teams. The expectations were higher than maybe they've ever been uh, because of the split, because of the changes, because of the players leaving. Because every other top team made a ton of changes. There we go, exactly. And Fnatic are showing up. The team comp so similar to the previous game, but as you mentioned, Officio, the right decisions in the right time. It was still close around that Baron before Ooh. here. Definitely 50-50 Baron. Gilius made it into the pit. But what will happen? There's the Mega Nine. Will find one, but simply not enough. There's a Devour now into Capuchon. He's going to swing. Caps blows up Vitality. And that might just be it. The Inhibitor turret will fall immediately after as the Inhibitor is focused down. Super Minions are pouring onto the Nexus turrets. It's taken two and a half years. It's taken five splits. The Fnatic legacy of always making finals is finally coming true. And for the first time in two years, Fnatic advanced to the finals. Fnatic take the series three to one, Deficio, and set themselves up for a truly defining clash of kings. Yes, sir. In Copenhagen against G2 Esports, the only two organizations to truly conquer and rule Europe. The two organizations who's won nine out of ten splits in Europe since we introduced the LCS in 2013. Guess to fight on the big stage in Copenhagen. And if you want to watch that live, you need to go get tickets now, otherwise they're going to get sold out in like a day. Unbelievable. <laughs> and for Vitality, a difficult series. They showed up at times, but unfortunately were just outclassed by Fnatic. That's true, but I love how Vitality are constantly trying to get back in the game by fighting. It's never just sitting back and waiting. They're contesting every Baron they can. They're trying to make the big outplays for themselves, but it was an interesting series because what a lot of people expected to happen with Vitality winning the early game, yes. shutting down Caps in the laning phase, that didn't happen. It was a lot more of Fnatic matching that, going toe-to-toe -to -toe early, even winning some of them. Yeah, of course, you see the guys on your screen right now. We get to play in Denmark. Exceptionally happy. Bruxa Caps get to play in Denmark, and crucially just off to the side of the screen, a couple glimpses there of Young Buck. Former coach of G2 Esports now facing off against G2 Esports in the final. And of course, he is now denied the rookie of the split, Jazuke. But it's tough for Vitality because I think, especially here in the last game, they felt like they had a lot of ways to still win. Yes. It wasn't until they end up getting caught in the mid lane and then the Baron goes down despite a 50 50 smite. It goes to Fnatic. They win the fight right after it. And that's when it really felt like okay, now it was over. But until that happened, it still felt like Vitality could try and get back in this game, could outplay Fnatic still. So yes. it's a tough, tough loss because they've done so much to get to this point. It was a competitive series. It was. And then they get to play against Fnatic here in the semifinal. Yes. And you're so close to the actual final. Yes. There's a bunch of rookies on this team. Sadly, you couldn't make it. I think with the exception of game one, games two, three, and four, yeah, one traded was one -sided. blow for blow. Early game was matched. I mean, game two in particular was just ridiculous. Ridiculous. I think we had 12 kills by 10 minutes. It was, <laughs> it was really, really exciting, but not the cleanest uh, League of Legends that we've come to expect. When there's this much fighting, it's impossible to play clean games yes. because you just constantly have things being forced. And of course, the title shot. Uh, Reckless, we heard multiple times throughout the day talking about what it would mean. Uh, you know, he has won third places uh, many times. And so it's, it's that, that very bittersweet victory. Uh, now he's back in finals. Now he gets to really put up or shut up because he's going up against the king of Europe perks, four-time consecutive winner, and his new look G2. In terms of the organizations, it's this is the biggest possible final we can get uh, in Europe, that is for sure. But the third place game as well, we always have to remember to mention this, like the points going towards Worlds, Yes. they always end up being important, they even do. though people don't remember the ones from spring, the points are necessary and Rift Rivals as well. This guy gets it. This guy gets it. So we'll see how that plays out. For now, though, we need to turn our attention to the winners of today and the finalists who join G2. Fnatic have earned themselves that spot in the 2008 Spring Finals. We want to know who you think carried the hardest. Good luck to our analysts because they had to narrow it down to three. And the three names that they've picked is Caps, 
Reckless and Hillisang. Head over to at LOL Esports Twitter. Vote for your poll. Plus, tell us who your player of the series is. I don't care whose his was. It's your vote that matters. Cool. Then I don't want to talk about it. Fantastic. Then I won't make you talk about it. We Great. are getting ourselves ready with an interview with Draco shortly. And he's sitting by with Broxa and Buipo. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We were just debating who the player of the game is. But before we do that any further, Weepo, you came on stage, you replaced Soaz, you won, and now you're going to finals. Talk to me about how you feel right now. Uh, it's, I'm pretty ecstatic right now. I never expected that this would happen. The way how it happened was not how I wanted it, because obviously I got replaced because of an injury rather than my better play. So I struggled with the feeling of, do I deserve to be here? Do I deserve to play? And now that we won and I proved that I do, it's just an amazing feeling, really. Yeah, well, it looks good for you on stage. Now to you, Broxa, I mean, this was, they were able to grab a single game off you. It was looking a little bit rough there, but you guys came back swinging in game four. Talk to me about the feelings after you guys did lose that game after a, a pretty clean 2-0 start. Well, I think generally throughout this whole week, I've been a little bit stressed because both, uh, both last year, we, we generally looked pretty good. But then when it came to the semifinal, something went wrong and we choked. Um, and then this time, obviously, I didn't want the same thing to happen. And I felt some, some stress during the week. And also after game four, you know, the, the thoughts go like, oh shit, is it gonna happen again now? Can we actually end the series? And luckily we did. <laughs> Worked out in the end, did pull off the win. I'm curious, did having an emergency substitute, even one who did successfully win the series with you, did that put more pressure on you guys coming into the week and coming into this series? Um, I, I don't know if it necessarily puts more pressure on us. I think I've, I've been thinking throughout the week that I, I had to step uh, up a bit more in terms of shot calling since in mid-late game Soas has always been a big voice. Uh, Buibo is calling a lot as well, but the thing is that Soas has always been there in the big games to, to help everyone do the right thing. And in the big games, his experience has usually helped a lot. And that's a place where I try to step in a bit myself today and try to take some of that role, take some of that responsibility. and. Yeah, I think we both did really well, so it turned out good anyways. And I'm curious for you, what was your prep like going from there's no way I'm, I'm playing in playoffs at all to, oh, look, I'm playing semifinals, and then if we win either finals or third place, depending on the result, how did you feel about this week? What was your preparation like? Uh, for me, I think I got really lucky for this week and this patch in general because the entire patch has, I think, four out of five other top, top laners are carry champions, and I feel like when I was considered for stage time was when these champions saw play. So I've always been considered over Soaz in the sense when Camille and Gangplank are meta, and that's exactly what the meta is right now for top. So with Swain coming into the mix, I'm just 100% at home because even if you look at my solo queue, you know, the four, top four champions I like playing the most and play the most are the best top laners in competitive. So for me, it just worked out perfectly. Not even afraid to reveal it. Clear as day, showing up what you show off at solo queue here. It was a good look, it was a good transition. But as we look ahead towards finals, a lot of pressure. Now, this isn't something that was levied against you as much, but Broxa last year when we saw playoffs, when we saw you guys choke, as you were calling it earlier, there was a lot of criticism levied at you individually even as a member of Fnatic. I'm curious, how do you feel like you've developed since the last time, or as an individual, since the last time Fnatic was playing in playoffs in the EULCS? I think generally, even, even last year and at Worlds, when I got a lot of criticism, I think some of it was fair and a lot of it was actually not, because I think Obviously, sometimes this is, this is not the case, but often the jungler is like showcasing how, how strong the team is in terms of early game, in terms of uh, shot calling and all this. And I think, um, obviously, there were things I could do better, but we also just made so many mistakes, and that also made me look a bit worse as well. Um, also, because I transitioned to a more supportive role, which is also the case now. Um, but I think generally, I've been playing pretty well this split, especially like last week and, and today, I think I stepped up. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. Gotta play in Italy, a little less of the supportive role, a little more of the carry champions, throw out some spears there. Now, as we look ahead towards your next match against G2, one last question for you, Buipo. Mm. Going up against Wonder, mm. how are you feeling about that top lane matchup? I know you were getting a lot of attention, getting camped in the matches today. Do you feel like you can come in stronger than you did today against that matchup in G2? Uh, I think the priority for the champions will be relatively the same. I think the champion pool will be the same in between the two players. I think Gangplank will be a very high priority for that match. Uh, and I think that's good because I'm very comfortable playing it and playing against it. 
I'm not 100% sure what their idea is, as they have a very strong mid 2v2. And I think most of top lane revolves around what they want to do if they have a stronger mid 2v2. If they want to play for bot, then you have a 1v1 matchup and you're on the island, like people say. But if they're winning it and they do decide to go for me, I think I'm going to have a, a little of a rough time. I'm going to try and prepare a few more pocket picks if possible to try and see if I uh, can handle those 1v3 situations better. All right, I'm excited to see you. Congrats again, guys, on your win and your future match this Sunday in Copenhagen. I'm excited to see it. We'll see who comes out on top. But for now, time to send it over to the post-game lobby with Shocks.